So in addition to the affinity trial, we have another study that took on the rather, uh, I think, a uh, huge challenge of treating HER2-positive early-stage breast cancer. We know that there are continued recurrences over time, uh, but we have had a big impact with trastuzumab. But it's not as if we can't improve on that. So it really does justify these adjuvant trials with agents that we think uh, will be useful. So the Extinet trial was one of those trials that's already been published now and reported. Uh, and that looked at actually a novel oral tyrosine kinase inhibitor, so-called PAN-HER2 HER inhibitor, so it blocks other parts of that HER family, uh, called neratinib. Neratinib has been already tested in the metastatic setting in a number of different trials, but mostly compared to trastuzumab or other chemotherapy combinations. And neratinib actually has been owned by a number of different companies, and that complicated the trials that were done both in the adjuvant setting, the Extinet trial, but more importantly in the metastatic setting. I think that uh, the, the way we would study neratinib now is a little bit different than the way it was studied before. We understand it a little bit better. And in fact, a metastatic trial is ongoing that may help with that. But Extinet started a while ago, and the idea was that you do see continued recurrences in HER2-positive disease over time. So maybe if you give a non-cross-resistant drug, what we knew about the metastatic setting, despite the sort of messy randomized trials, was that neratinib was effective in patients whose cancer had pro progressed on chemotherapy, all the chemotherapy agents, and trastuzumab. A subset of patients responded to neratinib so it must be non-cross-resistant. Made sense from preclinical models. Also, we had a bit of data that we kind of thought about afterwards, more than before when the trial was designed, and that's not uncommon, which is that we knew that ER-positive breast cancer that's also HER2-positive had relative resistance to hormone therapy. And in fact, we had uh, first-line metastatic trials that showed that the combination of lapatinib, a weaker oral PAN-HER tyrosine kinase inhibitor, uh, could improve the response and response duration to hormone therapy, as could trastuzumab. It's just the results with the lapatinib looked maybe even a little better. And that we've shown subsequently in preclinical models that actually if you add neratinib, you can improve the response in ER-positive, HER2-positive breast cancer. So this is kind of interesting data. But it didn't really, it wasn't the basis for the whole Extinet trial. Extinet said, okay, people relapse late. Maybe if we give another drug that's non-cross-resistant after a year of trastuzumab, we'll improve outcome. Very simple question. So the trial randomized patients who were at least a year out had completed their trastuzumab to receive either neratinib or not for one year. And it was placebo-controlled. We also knew something else about neratinib causes a lot of diarrhea. It causes more diarrhea than lapatinib. And when Extinet was started, there was no specific approach to prevent the diarrhea. Now, as Extinet was ongoing, we were doing other trials. We actually incorporated neratinib into our iSpy neoadjuvant study. We learned pretty quickly people got diarrhea. They got it really early in the first two or three days. And we learned a little bit from what the NSABP was discussing that Starting with prevention up front, prophylaxis, was better than reacting. If you get bad diarrhea in the first few days and then it quiets down, just get rid of that bad diarrhea in the first few days. So we developed a prophylactic regimen with loperamide, uh, and the idea was that people would take that up front and actually really improve the tolerance in I spy 2 of using neuratinib. But that same approach wasn't used in Extinet. So the results of Extinet were complicated by the fact that it went through three different companies, it got reduced in size, people thought, oh, the metastatic trials are no good, so neratinib is no good, so we might as well cut our losses and stop the trial early. So they changed the follow-up time to just do a very early look to see what happened, and if it wasn't good, they would stop things then. Well, Puma acquired the drug, thankfully, in many ways, um, and uh, got that sort of baggage, right? A sm smaller trial, although still quite respectable, and uh, two years of follow-up. So at two years, surprisingly enough, giving neratinib was better than taking a placebo. And then when they looked at the subsets, 
it turned out that that benefit was almost all in the ER positive group, which makes perfect sense based on what we understand about ER positive disease. Now the trial was designed to look at the whole group, and the whole group benefited. And they benefited in a statistically significant way. But the difference in ER positive disease was much greater, and even more clinically important, I think, to us as practicing oncologists. If you took patients who had ER positive, HER2 positive breast cancer, you could make a big difference on their risk of recurrence by giving neuratinib. So we thought that that data was really very encouraging, and even more so when it was confirmed with three years of follow-up, and Puma extended, of course, the duration of follow-up so that we can continue to see how these patients do over time and look for, of course, the, the uh, gold key, which is looking at survival benefit over time. But the one thing we had to deal with in that first two-year presentation was, and publication was, everybody gets diarrhea and a lot of patients get serious diarrhea. Some of those patients stop taking the drug fairly quickly. After time, of course, the diarrhea quiets down, people get used to it, they do okay, but you have that loss of patients early on who don't want to take the drug. They say, look, I already did my chemo and trastuzumab, I don't want to have diarrhea now, you know, I'm better, I'm done. So another trial was started called the control trial, which is giving everybody neuratinib in that extended adjuvant setting for HER2-positive disease, but using upfront prophylaxis and showed, as had some smaller trials, that you could markedly reduce the rate of grade three diarrhea and probably discontinuation over time. Those data are still quite small. Um, and then the idea was maybe with understanding the etiology of diarrhea, that you could add in alternative preventive approaches along with loperamide, of course not stopping it, and then you could see even better control of the diarrhea and less constipation, which people don't like. So the first set cohort after loperamide was budesonide, an oral non-absorbable steroid, and we did see a big improvement there, which is quite nice. And then the third cohort, which is still accruing, is cholestopol, uh, a really interesting binding drug, a lipid binding drug, and a bile salt binding drug. And uh, in this uh, small, this is a small cohort because it's still accruing, we've seen even a better control of diarrhea. So, you know, we're excited about that data that we'll have a way of sort of packaging, giving neuratinib with a prophylactic regimen that will be quite effective and maintain the quality of life of our patients, which of course in this setting is really important because, you know, you're not curing everybody, you're helping people. So you want to make sure you can maintain the quality of life at the same time. So actually, neuratinib went to the ODAC committee, our Oncology Drug Advisory Committee, uh, through the FDA, and had a positive vote with 12 out of uh, 16 people on the panel voting for approval for neuratinib. So now it goes through the FDA and their evaluation, but the statistical evaluations by the FDA were also quite favorable. So this is a very interesting approach, you know, extended adjuvant therapy in HER2-positive disease. I expect when it is approved and goes into practice that it will be largely used in higher risk, node-positive, ER-positive, HER2-positive breast cancer. But that will remain to be seen.